Welcome to this week's first live webinar. I'm Alex Chisnell from the Festival of Enterprise. Um, those of you who've joined me over the last three, three and a half weeks, um, thank you for tuning in again. I've got a very good friend of mine on today. I've got Ryan England. Um, Hello. Ryan's the founder of many creative digital agency for retail brands. So he's been in the game for well over a decade helping retail brands. We both work with the likes of Jimmy's Ice Coffee. Ryan's also worked with Marshall Amps, Dimplex to grow their digital audiences, expand their online presence and increase their e-commerce sales. So going to be covering um, some really interesting stuff today. I am genuinely interested myself and I think this will help a lot of people in a lot of industries, let alone um, the industry that, um, that Ryan's in. So we're calling it Opportunity Through Adversity. Ryan's going to be covering some practical hints and tips for running effective online marketing campaigns, adjusting your business operations to survive and thrive during this period of turbulence, and what KPIs you should be looking for when running marketing over the next few weeks. So, um, hope you're all safe and well, enjoying this beautiful weather. Um, assume everybody's indoors now on their laptops because I cannot see a thing when I'm outside in my garden looking at mine. <laughs> um, thank you everybody for posting up. I see we've got people coming here. We've got um, Cornwall, we've got Bath, we've got Nuneaton. Uh, I see Warren's pinged in. Hello again, Warren. So thank you all for joining us. Um, without further ado, um, I'm going to hand over to Ryan. If you've got any questions, by the way, I will curate these. So just pop them. The easiest is pop them in the chat function. Don't pop them in the ask a question button because for some reason the speaker doesn't get to see those questions, which is a bit daft if you ask me. But anyway, um, just pop them on the chat function and then Ryan will get to see them at the end as well. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll hand you over to Ryan. I'm just going to um, share his screen so you can see his presentation here. Um, he's going to talk you through um, his presentation this morning. So, Ryan, take it away, buddy. Thank you, my man. I really appreciate the lovely, um, lovely introduction um, and the opportunity to to, to talk here today. Um, I wanted to uh, obviously the world is crazy. Everything's up in the air at the moment. I don't want to dwell too much on that. Um, what I wanted to do was was consider how I could give as much value as possible within the sort of timeline that we've got. Um, so this presentation is a, um, it's kind of a, a, a concentrated mix of all of the advice and all of the tips, hints, suggestions, and um, tricks that we've been giving our clients um, to, uh, to help them through this time. Um, so. Uh, obviously, we've, we've uh, as a as a marketing agency for retail brands, um, we we get asked by our clients a lot on how to navigate tricky waters and how to optimize everything, how to sort of get the most out of, of what they're doing. Um, so, and we've had more inquiries than ever in the last couple of weeks. So, um, we've uh, we've kind of compiled this from all that information. Um, so yeah, uh, people people are having to take on um, new roles as well within companies, which is which is a really interesting situation because um, people are, are are being sort of thrown in the deep end where they've furloughed someone or they've they've, they've uh, had to let someone go off temporarily. Um, so this is kind of aimed at uh, people who might be in charge of marketing, uh, people looking to optimize the marketing, um, potentially people that have kind of had to take on that role without necessarily. Um, wanting to or, or, or have the previous experience of it. Um, so ideally, this is kind of a, a relatively practical way of, of getting right into the nitty gritty. Um, the, uh, I, I think the, the general cons uh, the consensus from our side of things is those that innovate, those that um, uh, push through tricky times and troubled waters will come out the other side as a stronger business. Um, so, so that's what this, this uh, advice is designed to be. Um, and it's important to note that we're talking about opportunity, opportunity uh, through adversity rather than being opportunistic. Um, so this is designed to help your business survive and thrive rather than make money off the crisis. Um, so when we talk about opportunity, um, I'm just gonna switch over to my slideshow. 
So when we talk about opportunity, we are talking about the opportunity to do three things. Uh, save money um, where you can, spend what money you have remaining more effectively, and to find new revenue channels. Um, so find new routes to the customer to get your products in front of them uh, and, and keep the sales coming in during the time. Um, and we have consolidated that into six pieces of advice that we've given to our clients. Um, first one being act on data. Um, so that's making sure that uh, you don't make quick judgment calls or uh, take action too swiftly without knowing all the consequences behind those actions. So making sure that you've got reliable data and, and information available to hand to make accurate and uh, correct decisions uh, don't have a negative impact on your business. Um, reasonable costs. So making sure that uh, when you are making cost savings, you're not cutting off your nose to spite your face. You're, you're making sensible decisions to reduce your monthly outgoings. Uh, focus on macro. So now is an amazing time to try and cut through some of the noise and to drill right down into the details of the uh, of the campaigns you're running, the marketing you're running, the messaging you're outputting, uh, and to focus in on the, the, the kind of minutia there to see if there's opportunities and um, optimizations you missed. Uh, it's time to get your house in order. So it's time to uh, tidy up some of the loose ends, uh, make sure you haven't missed anything, uh, to bring things together um, so that when we come out of this isolation period or during the next couple of weeks, we're then ready to uh, welcome new customers in, and get back to business as normal, whatever that may be. Um, Over-communicate everywhere. So making sure that you are communicating effectively with your clients and customers, making sure that your messaging is clear and on point, and making sure that you're taking into consideration how the customer may feel at this point in time. Uh, and let's develop new routes to market. Um, let's, uh, let's find some, some new opportunities, uh, new customers, new uh, options available in the marketplace. So um, over the next sort of 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to drill down into each of these things um, and give some, some advice and some, some tips on, on what we actually mean by that information. Um, so let's start with act on data. Um, what we're really talking about here is taking a considered approach to uh, safeguarding your business. So making sure we don't make snap decisions, snap judgment calls, um, uh, calls that are uh, made on gut feel, um, making sure that we've got the data to hand to make those decisions and we're basing our decisions on complete data and accurate data uh, and trying to make sure that we remove uh, all the emotion and all the, the, the noise around that data um, to, uh, to make those decisions accurate uh, and to make sure that they are uh, correct both short term and long term. Um, the uh, example that I, I always go to is, um, let's say for example, you're looking to reduce the uh, cost of your marketing. Um, it, your marketing is normally one of the first things to go when uh, people uh, need to save money. Um, it's seen as a, um, a, a, a high cost and not necessarily a necessity uh, to businesses, um, which is uh, sometimes can be true, uh, but a lot of the time doing that will harm your longer term business viability. Um, it will do damage to your longer term sales. Uh, it will restrict your maneuverability um, for navigating these waters and coming out of it the other side. Um, the, the example I give is, um, let's, let's say uh, you're looking to reduce your uh, advertising spend by culling off a few of your marketing campaigns. Um, let's say, for example, this is your Facebook uh, advertising uh, account. You've got these two campaigns running. Um, both of them are running concurrently. Um, you've got your first campaign, which has got 111 clicks. Uh, you've got 
uh, a cost per click of one pound and eight pence, um, and you spent one hundred and twenty pounds. Um, the other one, obviously, the same number of clicks, um, the double uh, cost per click and double the amount spent. Um, so when you're looking to cut the costs, your initial gut reaction is, well, I'm getting the same results from both of these campaigns. Um, let's uh, let's turn off that second one. Um, the, the difficulty comes when you are looking at an incomplete data set. Um, so uh, when you add into that, the uh, number of checkouts that have been initiated from that second advert step. So let's say you're an online store, um, you've got products uh, listed on Facebook, these campaigns for your product listings, um, and doing the campaign there on the second one, um, we've actually had 89 checkouts. Um, so 89 customers have gone through our process, clicked our advert, gone to our product page, and checked out at the other side. Um, on the first one, only 10. Uh, so when you actually look at that data, you look at the number of unique checkouts, uh, 89, and you look at the cost per checkout, you're actually paying £2.27. Um, the first one is actually £12. Um, so when you look at a complete data set and you look at uh, all the information that's available to you, uh, it then becomes a much more interesting um, discussion about which campaign you close. Um, our advice would normally be, if you have the budget, to cancel out the first one. Um, but it's those kind of decisions where you are looking to take swift action and looking to reduce your expenditure where uh, we often take the decisions that's easiest and uh, we don't investigate enough into the, uh, the data we have available or the data that we're gathering at the time. Um, so it's important to have the, the real complete picture before making those decisions. Um, you need to probe uh, the options available in your analytics account, the options available in your marketing account, the options that are available uh, in your um, CRM, for example, uh, and tie all that information together and then make a decision once you know that you've got all of that data. Um, I guess what I'm saying is you have to make sure that you have the right data to make those decisions, um, that the data that you have is accurate and it's up to date, um, that you have all the data available to make the decisions. So make sure you're not missing any data, make sure you've probed all of the uh, data points that you have available to you, make sure when you're looking at a data view, you've got all those columns enabled so that you can, you can really see the complete picture. Um, and make sure that you have enough data to make the decisions. Don't go basing decisions on one or two clicks. Make sure that you have enough of a sample set in order to, to make that information valuable and, and correct. Um, then, once you have that data to hand, then you can start to cut uh, reasonable costs. Um, Often the, the costs that we find uh, when, when clients ask us to look at how to reduce their budgets, the costs that we find are often the hidden ones. They're the ones that no one would expect to find costs or just don't have a second thought to it. Um, so if you're looking to reduce the expenditure uh, of uh, your marketing or your, your uh, infrastructure costs, um, a really good place to start is the kind of hidden accounts, the, the, the stuff that you're, you're not expecting to find um, uh, you know, savings in, really. Um, so that's things like hosting services. Um, the amount of times that we have gone into a client's account, logged into their hosting provider and found servers that are unused or databases that they're paying for but haven't been updated in 15 years. Um, backups, hundreds of thousands of gigs of backup data. Um, and you're paying for all of that stuff um, when you don't necessarily need it. Maybe you only need 15 or 30 days of backup data. Um, you can kill off some of those um, servers. We're looking at, at the moment, on average, about 315 pound a month in savings on uh, hosting accounts alone. So when we've gone in and we've done this exercise, and we've done this exercise, uh, I think around 12 times at the moment. Um, each time we're going in, we're looking and, and making cost savings across the board, just reducing down the size of the servers, the backups and things like that, of £315 a month, um, which is a significant cost saving. Um, 
looking at software packages. Um, so if you've got unused licenses, um, things like Microsoft Office, you, you prepay for a bunch of licenses and then you assign them to people. So making sure that you aren't, aren't paying for someone else's license that you're not using. Um, old email accounts, uh, making sure that you've got, if you've got per seat pricing that you're not paying, they, they often don't tell you this, um, but that you aren't paying for too many seats. You might only be using three seats and you're paying for five. Um, and looking at whether lower pricing plans are um, are, are better uh, or, or more suited. And you might find that your current plan has features you don't necessarily need and reducing those down. I mean, it's fundamental stuff, but it's important to kind of highlight that. Um, and uh, partner costs as well. Um, so speaking to your partners and seeing if um, there's there's cost savings that can be made there or whether there's flexibility in the, the, the costs that you can save. Um, the uh, example I give is um, when, when we went into this process and we saw this all happening around us, we, uh, as many, um, went in and made some cost savings. Um, we reduced down our zero plan, so we used zero for our bookkeeping, um, switched down from their, their premium plus account to their premium account uh, because it gave us um, uh, uh, currencies. We don't use currencies. Everything's translated into pounds before we use it. Um, so we made a saving there. Um, if you use Zapier, uh, you can go to the cancellation page and there's a message there that you can fill in the form and they give you uh, 100 days of free Zapier as part of their COVID response. Um, so it's really good. Uh, a KPI on this side of things, I said that I would give some suggestions on KPI. Um, a really good starting point for a KPI on this is uh, average software cost per employee. So it's good to analyze the amount you're spending on software right now, uh, understand how much that software cost is, um, including things like uh, um, all of your accounting packages and things like that. You can average that across the number of employees and then looking to drive that down uh, over the coming couple of weeks. Um, uh, I think our average software cost at the moment is about £180 per employee um, for things like Office, Adobe Creative Cloud, things like that. Um, and reducing down that, uh, you don't have to do it all at once, but reducing that down average over time is a really, really important way of saving money. Um, once you have streamlined your ship and you have made sure you are running as slick and smooth as possible, um, then it's time to focus on the macro. Drill into the details of the campaign. Um, and what we're really talking about here is turning off autopilot. Um, Facebook loves, Facebook and Google um, love to put you on autopilot. Um, where they take care of all the settings, you just pay them money. Um, and I think they like that because uh, it gives them that little bit more control over your campaign and how your campaign is being run. Um, but what it does mean is you often, oftentimes end up spending more money on the KPIs that you're not interested in uh, and uh, allowing the campaign to run a little bit rampant. So uh, what we're talking about here is micromanaging your campaigns. Um, this is a little bit more practical, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of jump right in. but. Uh, although I've used Facebook for these examples, the almost exact comparison for this happens in, in Google, Am uh, Google um, AdWords as well. Um, and for um, YouTube, Pinterest, and, and those kind of things. Um, my number one piece of advice would be to stop using Boost. Um, that little Boost button down the bottom, nice and easy, really simple. Um, click the button, put your budget in, away you go. Um, but it hides a lot of the functionality behind the adverts. It hides a lot of the um, settings, optimizations, uh, and the management side of things that you can you can uh, handle. Um, so, what we're saying, uh, and our advice to anyone looking at making optimizations in your advertising campaign, uh, is to switch over to using uh, Ads Manager and Business Manager. Um, they give you that extra little bit of control and adjustment that, uh, that, that you can you can use to your advantage. Um, and what we're talking about are things like um, using manual placement. Uh, so if you don't use manual placement, you can use automatic placement, which is where Facebook will determine where your ad is shown or not shown. 
um, as you can see, uh, this is actually done in Facebook on the ad set level. So not on the individual ads and not a campaign level, but on the ad set level. Um, you can determine where your advert is shown. Um, so if you don't choose any option, Facebook just goes wild and selects a lot of them. Uh, so your advert could be shown across Instagram, Messenger, uh, across the audience network, so off-site. Um, and you could be shown as a static image in a video, which doesn't convert very well. Um, you could be shown pre-roll, post-roll, midstream, um, and you might not want a lot of those uh, placements. Um, there are some placements that are optimal, obviously newsfeed being one of them, um, and there are some that are suboptimal. So uh, for some campaigns, having the little one, uh, the, the, the small advert on the side bar of uh, Facebook isn't a very effective marketing um, campaign but you're, every time you're shown you're you're paying for those adverts um, you're paying for the display of those adverts so drilling into the little more detail on this and selecting manual placements and then physically choosing where you want your um, ad to be shown and turning on and off gives you that little element of control which stops unnecessary spend um, and it means that your adverts are running very very effectively and efficiently um, much of the same thing on the um, ad strategy. Uh, so you actually have budget strategies. Um, you don't have to pay per impression. Um, so you don't have to pay, put in a, a, a general amount. You can actually fine tune your campaign. Um, this again is set on ad, uh, ad set level, ad set level. Um, you, under the optimization and uh, delivery, you can choose an objective. So optimize for ad delivery, then clicks. And you can choose when you're charged. They hide it under this little link called advanced options or something like that. Click that and down comes this link. Um, the default is impressions. So you're paying every single time that someone uh, looks at your advert. Um, but really, if you're driving for link clicks, you only really want to pay when someone clicks your link. Um, and Facebook will change the way that they're, they're uh, uh, displaying your ads based on this, this option. Uh, so you've got cost cap and bid cap. Bid cap will stop you uh, will stop you bidding more than the amount that you put in. So if you put in 12 pence, Facebook will bid 12 pence. Um, you might find that's a little low. You might you will have to play with those numbers a little bit. Um, but that gives you that little bit extra control. It gives you that little bit of, of customization that stops you spending additional money than you need to. Um, there's a lot of eyes on Facebook at the moment. Um, so, so why are we saying to do these, these, uh, these little optimizations? Um, we're saying it because um, really Facebook is screwed. Um, Facebook is in a little bit of trouble at the moment. Uh, same as Google. Um, they're in the business of profiling users. Um, they are uh, in the business of understanding user behavior uh, and selling adverts to those users, to advertisers. Um, at the moment, with all this behavior change and a lot of the uh, 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 adapting that the, the uh, general populace is having to do, um, Facebook's algorithms and profiles are a little bit squiff at the moment. Um, they are having to quite quickly adjust to behavior changes. And we're seeing a lot of um, users when they're uh, when they're setting up advertising campaigns, seeing people that in, in normal circumstances would never be part of their audience. Um, and they're starting to, to see these kind of, these, these audience members creep in where they are expressing an interest in something. So um, for example, you might want to be running a, 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 an advertising campaign that targets people that bake regularly. Uh, and uh, with, the, with everyone being home, everyone's searching for baking uh, information baking ingredients but only because they want to make banana bread once um, and then they're never going to bake again whereas you want cereal bakers you want people that have a long-term interest in this um, so you you potentially those people will fall into your audience temporarily uh, and then once this is all over they'll go back to their normal lives they'll forget about baking and, and you've already spent that money to try and capture that audience try and capture that person um, so by adding in that a little bit of finite control in there you're able to uh, make sure that you're not overspending on this extra audience that otherwise would never be interested in your product. Um, but you definitely should stick with Facebook and Google. Um, it's 
super cheap at the moment uh, to advertise on Facebook. I know everyone says all oh, Facebook's getting more expensive. It used to be super cheap, but it's driving down at the moment. The cost of Facebook advertising is uh, relative to uh, the same time last year. Uh, I think it's about a third of the cost. Um, the the uh, cost per melee on Facebook, uh, which is how you gauge kind of general Facebook costs, has been plummeting down. Um, so, and, and that's because there's more people looking at Facebook. They've got more inventory available. Uh, the some of the larger advertisers have pulled their advertising spend at the moment, so they haven't got as many advertisers. And when you have that kind of gap, then the, the price of Facebook marketing drops, um, which is Nice situation to be in if you're uh, a business looking to advertise on Facebook or Google. That will gradually creep back up again as advertisers come out of the kind of shock of the system and they start to bring their adverts back on board again. Um, so some tips on the macro. Uh, I'm going to kind of rattle through this relatively quickly. Um, uh, obviously, uh, manual placements, making sure your manual placements, you've selected where you want the advert to show. Yeah, if your link click is strategy, it is correct. Some people can't do that strategy because they haven't had a Facebook account long enough. I think you have to have it for at least uh, two weeks in order to be able to select um, to pay for cost per click rather than impression. Um, making sure that you've got your Facebook pixel and Google ads conversion pixel installed. Those are little code snippets that Google and Facebook will give you uh, that you drop into your checkout on your checkout completion page. And that reports back to Facebook and Google uh, your uh, conversions so every time you make a new sale um, make sure that you have that installed before you do any kind of advertising campaign uh, or a Google Ads campaign um, so that you are able to track who's clicking through what action they're taking on your website and um, eventually you can actually change your spend based on that the behaviors and those pixels um, and make sure if you are setting those bid controls the, the cost of click controls make sure you're adjusting them regularly um, we say weekly, uh, at least weekly, um, but keep an eye on them, make sure that you're still getting the number of traffic you want. Sometimes you can set that bid too low and you'll get, uh, you'll have a reduction in traffic. You can always adjust that bid in real time, but make sure you are checking that uh, bid. Uh, and a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people are using cost per click or cost per impression, a good metric to gauge um, your uh, advertising spend. Uh, but it's kind of it's, it's been thrown out recently. It's not a great metric to use because of that behavior change in, in, in the general populace. Um, we suggest at the moment to use cost per acquisition as a um, as a really good metric to gauge. Um, and get your house in order. Um, this is kind of general housekeeping, making sure that um, your, your, your ship is running tight, everything's running smoothly. Um, start with SEO, um, compile your keyword list, make sure that you've got an SEO audit and check your rankings. So you want to have a really complete keyword list. Um, you want to run that through uh, an SEO audit. So you want to make sure that you've got um, your keywords on your site, your ranking well for them, and then check those rankings. Make sure that you're ranking well in Google for those. Um, there's a couple of tools that other languages do this. SEM Rush is my personal favorite, uh, or Moz as well. Um, they will allow you to create a really good keyword list, uh, run an SEO audit um, to make sure that those keywords are ranking well on the site, and then check your rankings off site. So check that you're ranking well in Google and Facebook, Facebook, uh, Google, and uh, uh, Bing. Bing? Does anyone use that now? <laughs> um, how are we doing for time, Alex? We're well, good, mate. Yeah, just a quick question from David yeah. while you were talking there on Facebook ads. Um, is it true to say we should focus on lifetime value when we look at Facebook costs? Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you have uh, a little bit coming up on customer loyalty, um, but yeah, lifetime value is a really good metric. Um, actually, now more than ever, because we're yeah. seeing um, uh, we're seeing very high customer loyalty for brands that express interest in customer loyalty. So if you call on your customers to be loyal, uh, we're seeing a very big uptick in loyalty. So yeah, lifetime value, if you're, uh, if you're able to track that metric over time, um, that's a, a really, really good indicator. That's actually better than cost per acquisition because then you're able to look at, okay, um, uh, overall revenue for that user, 
lifetime acquisition, uh, lifetime value um, is, if you have it available, a better um, a better metric to track. Thank you. Um, content uh, now is an amazing time to focus on content. Um, making sure that you have a social media calendar for the next three months. Um, it's probably all been blown out of the water, your content calendar now. I know a mm -hmm. lot of our clients have. Um, and it's a little bit painful, but you have to look at redoing it again. Um, so it's time to get back on track with that. Make sure you include key holidays and dates. I know they're less important now because people kind of lose track of day and time, uh, but make sure you still include them. You can still celebrate them. Um, things like St. Patrick's Day, uh, I think it's already passed, but um, St. Patrick's Day, uh, planning for Black Friday coming up, um, uh, your spring summer drop, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, retailers are, are adjusting their spring summer drop at the moment or even cancelling them completely. But um, if you are still proceeding with that, then make sure you've got those planned into your calendar. Um, spend time to create all the assets and captions right now. You can always adjust them later on, but having that bank of asset creations is, is really, really valuable because it allows you, you've got your, your content calendar all out, but it allows you to adapt to change. So if you have a big announcement from the government, suddenly everyone's out of lockdown, you can insert posts into that calendar, but know that you still have that content bank um, available to you. And include your blog posts. Um, you should be putting out blog posts uh, regularly through this time not just COVID related either um you can you can look much more at the um the the, the interesting stuff um uh, that's happening within business as well so there's a lot of positivity in business um some uh really good tools for using this um so hootsuite content cow sprout social they're all very similar uh, and they allow you to do your content planning and your content scheduling and publishing as well um, the, the one that we recommend is, is later the one at the very bottom. That's the one that our social media manager uses. Um, just, she likes the interface and it's, it's a, a very, very powerful tool. Um, and I think it's, it's a relatively good price point. Um, but all of these are roughly similar in functionality and it's kind of down to preference really. Um, and they're, they're all really great tools for being able to plan, understand and interact with your users as well. Uh, and then you want to fix any gaps. So this kind of goes back to the first point, making sure you've got all the data. Um, you want to make sure that you have any missing data. Uh, you're plugging those gaps. Um, so we're talking about uh, customer profiling and loyalty here. Um, making sure that things like your, your basic stuff like Google Analytics are in place. Um, adding a CRM if you, have, if you don't have one. Uh, most businesses should have a CRM. I don't. I can't really think of any business that shouldn't have a CRM. Um, obviously, big boys like HubSpot and things like that. Um, making sure that you're gathering information on your interactions with that user, um, which will then lead back to your lifetime value of that user. It might not be that that lifetime value is a physical cash attribute that that user has paid to you, but they might have referred you 10, 10 items of business, um, which is a, an even more valuable thing. Um, so making sure that you have the ability to track how loyal your customers are um, and consider something like mixed panel segment. Uh, mixed panel segment allow you to add in multiple sources to build up a customer profile. Um, segments are a particular favorite of mine. Um, it allows you to extract information from HubSpot, Intercom, uh, Google Analytics. Um, so you can start to build up a picture of who your customers are um, how they're using your your products, how regularly they're shopping with you, how um, uh, engaged they are as a, as a customer. Um, so um, we're kind of starting to rattle through this now, but um, tips on the stage. Um, keep a tally of uh, common questions you're being asked and use that as the basis for your uh, blog articles. Um, um, if you are getting a lot of the same question, it means you haven't answered it very well. So get the answer out there and let's get a blog post going for that. Um, recent changes to Facebook's algorithm seems to be highlighting positivity uh, a lot more. Um, positive sentiment is rising up in the newsfeed, uh, in, in the, the, the ranking algorithm for posts in the newsfeed. Um, using sentiment analysis, uh, you can check how your posts are coming across, whether they're coming across with a positive 
um, a positive message uh, and how well they will rank in Facebook and other news feeds and LinkedIn. Um, we think we think this is a strategic change from Facebook and LinkedIn um, to to start to rank those results higher. So make sure that anything you're putting out um, has a uh, a positive spin, even if it is negative, um, that it has a, a, a positive sentiment behind it. Um, and KPIs for this team, for the for the kind of getting your house in order, you'll be able to track an increase or decrease in rankings uh, and a lift in social engagement. So uh, you, you, in any of those tools that we highlighted there should be able to give you that metric for social engagement. Um, it's kind of it's quite fun to gamify it. You should be able to start to see your your followers or engagement climb start to push that information out. Um, the second to last point, we're almost there guys, um, over communicate everywhere. Um, I can't stress this enough. Um, this is so, so vital. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, survey by Kantar, uh, Kantar study said 75% uh, of consumers want to know how brands are reacting to COVID. So they have an active interest in how brands are reacting and 78% uh, want brands to take care of their employees and hold their social responsibility during the problems. Um, so it's vital that you are messaging how you're coping with COVID, how you're looking after your employees. Um, so delivery messaging, uh, if you are a retailer or you ship a physical product, add information regarding delivery returns logistics. It might seem straightforward, so many shops don't have a specific banner at the top or a specific banner at the bottom that addresses COVID and says, this is how we're dealing with COVID. It's not disrupting our deliveries. Um, we're extending our returns period. Um, uh, we've seen an 18% uh, in US retailers, an 18% reduction in sales for stores that lack COVID messaging, just because there's that uncertainty around um, online stores. Uh, it's very, very simple to add. I think Hello Bar uh, has a, a plugin that you can add to the top of your site address the problem up front, make it really clear you have a response and uh, make sure that you're, you're kind of easing uh, tension and, and distress from your customer, make sure they understand it's business as usual. Uh, how you doing, Alex? Still awake? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good, good, good. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, email messaging, it's a perfect time to uh, cleanse your emails. Um, go through your email list. Um, get things tagged up, uh, so tag your sources, make sure your GDPR, GDPR compliant, um, cleanse your email list, there's tools out there that can do that. Uh, I think um, MailChimp has, a, 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 I'm too familiar with MailChimp, but I think MailChimp has an ability to cleanse, or you can pay for an additional bit to cleanse emails. Um, a really, really good time to go through, uh, look at your one and two, two star contacts and reach out to them if you can, run a specific campaign to them to try and encourage engagement back into your list again. Um, make sure that you're linked into e-commerce sales for, uh, sorry, e-commerce systems for sales tracking. So if you are sending out promotions and things like that, um, make sure that you are tracking those sales within, within uh, your e-commerce system. Um, and now is a great time. Um, Gary Vee is always going on about this. Um, uh, to follow up with your customers. Um, so this is direct interaction, identify your top 10% of customers. Um, while people are at home, they're a little bit easier to communicate with and the guard is down a little bit. Um, reach out to them personally um, via social, arrange a video call. Um, you could send them a personalized email. Um, you could uh, send a video to them. Um, the idea here is to uh, turn those guys into fanatics. So to start bringing them in on a referral basis, give those guys a discount code that gives them a referral kickback, um, give them a specific code that they can share with their friends and family. Um, these are like your most loyal, um, avid customers and you should treat them like that, that extra, doing that extra mile and uh, reaching out as the uh, manager or owner, uh, uh, employee at that business. I like um, that. I like that one. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, did he take the notes the whole time? See, look, there's a whole. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, just, it just really drives home that kind of personal relationship, and it's also uh, it makes people feel like they're being checked in on. You know, it makes people feel like that as a brand that cares um, mm. that you're looking after them. Yeah. Um, 
most importantly, communicate how you're looking after your staff. Um, if, if you haven't seen it in, in the Bournemouth area, um, uh, the guys behind Urban Gardens um, did an amazing video uh, when this was all kicking off. Um, and it was, a, it was an internal video that they then shared on LinkedIn. And he was literally talking to his staff. Uh, and it was, it was a very cut through video, very, very, uh, it was full of emotion. And he was being completely transparent and honest with his employees. Uh, and then he decided to share that on, on LinkedIn um, and I had a massive response because people saw that he cared about his staff and were looking after them. Um, so in this time, if you do nothing else, communicate how you're looking after your staff, blog posts, social posts, whatever. Make sure that people understand that you're looking after your staff. Um, the, it, even if you have to let them go, that there was a reason you had to let them go. You, you weren't able to do the furlough system or you weren't able to um, to afford the photo system to, to cover the wages until then. But make sure that you are looking after your staff and you're communicating effectively on how you are doing that. Um, MailChimp, awesome tool, great, easy, quick and easy to set up. Um, really good to get off with your first 2,000 users, I think, in their free plan. Uh, if you don't have an email list already, get to it. Um, and make sure that if you have a COVID page or a COVID response, you're updating that at least once a week. Um, worst bit about this would be out of date information. Put your updated date on those pages. Um, people don't want to think that you've kind of gone away or you've forgotten to update that or you, you're not treating COVID with the kind of respect that it needs. Um, KPIs during this time, um, engagement will be kind of a little bit whack if you're already tracking engagement because it will probably be naturally uh, going up anyway because of the amount of eyes on, on social. Um, but the social sentiment analysis is a really, really good tool um, to be able to measure the effectiveness of your sentiment, uh, sorry, your, your social campaigns. So seeing, um, you can use, there are, there are tools online for this. I, um, I think there's one called Talk, Talk More, something like that. Um, uh, I don't handle the social sentiment analysis, so I can't tell you the name, but um, it will track how positively people are talking about your brand. Uh, that is a great metric um, to see an uplift in how positivity is changing on your online social presence. Um, it will tell you whether people are using positive or negative keywords when they're referring to your brand. Um, and obviously the uplift in customer loyalty, so that customer uh, lifetime value of their sales, but also the referral based system and tracking how much those referrals are taking place, a great way of um, reaching out to those customers and, and giving them a little extra. Um, and then finally, we're on to the final run. Um, the last section is new routes to market. Um, so we're talking about new ways to get customers, new ways to promote, and new product development, which everyone seems to take their foot off the pedal at the moment, but there's not really any need to. Um, so this would be whistle stop, um, just because there's, there's um, uh, not too much time left. But um, new ways to get customers uh online delivery is the key to everything right now um no one's going out no one's shopping so get online if you aren't already um deliver and just eat are running at uh between five and seven day setup times um, which is uh, quite a lot shorter than it was two weeks ago and the normal time as well they've added tons of additional staff and support in to get set up on deliver and just eat um it will be right for some people for food and bev um, if you are uh, already set up in that. Obviously, it's kind of a basic, straightforward one, but Deliver and Just Eat are doing everything they possibly can to get people set up as quickly as possible. If you haven't already, get on it. Um, and you can also set, set up a quick uh, Squarespace or WooCommerce store to accept those orders. Um, I know Mac Cucumber in town. Um, got set up very quickly on a WooCommerce um, system, a little local cafe. Um, and they started receiving orders that day. Um, so it's like they able to just very quickly in increase your income. Um, FMCG, CPG brands um, should definitely look at launching a subscription box. Um, it's a really, really good way of um, encouraging customer loyalty, uh, but also um, uh, the likes of Gusto, uh, you see Gusto recently have stopped taking new customers. They literally cannot keep up with the amount of demand uh, that they're receiving. So subscription boxes are incredibly popular. Um, people are enjoying getting them sent out. Um, they're discovering new ways of cooking. Um, there are plugins available for WooCommerce, for Magento, for Shopify that allow you to do those subscription services. Um, super simple to set up. Um, 
F and B, uh, another route to opportunity is if you make a signature uh, product. Uh, there's a, a, a famous uh, um, email, uh, sorry, article in an email from The Hustle yesterday about a baker in New York, uh, famous for his um, uh, bakery products. Um, suddenly, his entire customer base is wiped out. He's then started selling the recipes, recipe boxes, um, to make what he makes at home. Um, so you can buy this recipe box and make it at home um, because he's seen this huge uptick in baking and, and homemade cooking. Um, so not just selling your finished products and subscription boxes, um, but selling those recipe boxes and uh, supplementing that with uh, an online course or YouTube tutorial about how to make that product or get that product um, uh, created. Um, and new ways to promote. Um, I've got two tricks for you, two really cool tricks that allow you to run effective campaigns really cheap. Okay, YouTube pre-roll. Uh, with YouTube, you can use TrueView. Uh, TrueView uh, is their video verification system. You only pay for a video advert on YouTube if it gets past 30 seconds. So if someone watches past 30 seconds, then you pay. Really good trick uh, with YouTube pre-roll is to be very clear at the very beginning who your target audience is and be very polarizing. Uh, if you aren't interested in uh, homemade bread, skip this. Um, you're encouraging people to click off your ads uh, because if they, uh, if they aren't interested in that product, you want to get them off before that 30 second mark. Um, what that means is when, when they get past that, that section of your video, once they get past that polarizing aspect of your video and you've got them past the 30 seconds, then they're going to be really engaged users. They have an active interest in what you're selling um, and the, uh, the marketing side of things is going to be really quick. So be very polarizing at the very beginning. If you're making that video, push people away from the video, try and get them off that video as quickly as possible. And you'll then have a very um, concentrated YouTube audience or uh, advert watching audience, then you can take off to your to your landing page. Um, and brand awareness campaign. Okay, if you're gonna run a brand awareness campaign, uh, which is just getting your logo and your identity in front of people, not necessarily with a call to action, but just for brand recognition, maybe you aren't selling something right now, but you wanna keep your brand alive uh, for later on when things start to open up again, you can start to sell again, um, you can run a brand awareness campaign. Best way to run a brand awareness campaign, remove all your call to actions, uh, make the most bland campaign. It can just be your logo with nothing else. Um, super boring, super simple. Remove any attraction to click on the advert whatsoever and then run it as a cost per click ad. Um, you, will, uh, you won't get any clicks on the ad, so you won't pay anything, but your impressions will be through the roof. You'll have so many people with eyes on that campaign, uh, but you won't be paying for it. Um, by making it bland, all you're doing is getting your logo in front of that person again. So it's, it's, it's almost subliminal. Uh, they'll skip past the ad because it's super um, uh, super boring. They won't take any action on it. Um, then there'll be the odd person that's intrigued about why your advert is so bland. Um, they, they might click on it. So you might, you might have a little small budget, but for the number of eyes on, uh, I think we paid um, £6.38 for 40,000 impressions on one of our adverts. Um, just because it was super, super bland. Um, when they eventually come to buy and you can start to ramp up your marketing again, if you are kind of in a, in a dormant state, they'll have that recognition of brand. They'll be able to move forward with it. Um, charity initiatives, shave your head, uh, run a pub quiz. Um, those are really, really good ways to promote. Um, we've been working with our client, Jimmy's Ice Coffee. Uh, they've been running a pub quiz. Um, uh, every, I think every other Friday, um, it's raised, I think, £10,000 so far, um, but they've had uh, 150 or 200 local customers that have donated to be part of that pub quiz. So a really, really effective way of getting in front of people. Um, and run, uh, buy one, get one free in similar promotions. Um, so make sure that you are running an effective campaign if you're selling online. Um, I know this is only for product basis stuff. Um, but like buy two, get one free, or um, start to move your inventory. Uh, don't get one free for people at the moment is a very positive campaign message. Uh, and for people that have potential financial problems coming up, uh, it offers them a potential saving. Um, one of our clients went about 368% increase in, in online traffic when they did a three for two campaign. 
Um, finally, finally, uh, new product development. There is no reason to pause new product development. Um, let me say it again. There's no reason to pause new product development. Um, things might be a little bit tight at the moment, um, but uh, now is a great time to continue with new product development and keep pushing out new products. Um, be aware, 78% uh, of consumers would avoid a brand that took advantage of COVID for profit. So make sure if you are launching a new product, um, that uh, you aren't seen to be profiteering from this problem, uh, unless it's aiding and assisting the system. So, you know, charity initiatives, things like that are great. Um, but uh, the COVID beer would not be a great idea right now. Um, you can use uh, the business continuity loans um, to do new P uh, NPD. Um, it's fine to use those to innovate uh, as long as it's part of your business. Um, and we are getting asked more than ever for uh, positive PR. Uh, so we've actually got journalists doing call outs or positive PR messages, those kind of nice stories. And NPD, so new product development during this time is, um, uh, is a very positive uh, thing to be coming out. Um, so you're easily getting to the top of PR lists and um, newsletters. Uh, and advertising is so cheap, it's um, it's really, really good to, to get a new product out there. Um, so I hope everyone is still there. Um, our advice, act on data. Make sure that you're making sensible, logical decisions. Cut reasonable costs, not all costs, so that you're not damaging a business. Focus on the macro, get into the micro details of everything about your campaign. Uh, get your house in order. Make sure that you're running a tight ship. Um, over communicate everywhere. You can't over communicate enough. Make sure that it is your message is out there all the time. And let's develop some new routes to market. Um, et voila. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ryan. Um, just time for a couple of quick questions, if that's all right. Um, I've just done the email thing, funnily enough. I, I did that last week. I cleansed my emails because there is a question here from Jess who says, would you advise to wait to email cleanse for B2B until everyone is back at work? Which is a good question. Yes, uh, B2B, yeah. Um... I, I would say so. Uh, you're going to have furloughed workers. You're going to have people that um, that have been let go or made redundant. Obviously, you want to to uh, clean the uh, let goes, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, uh, for people on furlough, um, they might have uh, bounce backs on their email, things like that. Uh, B2B is a little bit different. Um, maybe don't cleanse on that side of things um, quite yet. Um, but yeah, for B2C, it, uh, it's a great time to, uh, to list trends. Um, everyone's at home and they are receiving communications. You know, they're more communicative than ever. Um, I think I had, a, I had a stat in here somewhere about Facebook. Uh, it was in like a uh, 78% increase in, oh man, I can't find it now. Um, but yeah, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go cleansing on B2B yet. I would, I would stick with um, B2C. Thanks. Um, and then Warren says, I use a CRM system called Capsule at the moment. Can you recommend a better alternative that integrates with oh, Shopify? I remember Capsule. Um, yeah, Capsule is amazing, uh, but it doesn't have great connectivity. Um, uh, HubSpot is free on their free tier. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those pay-to-play platforms, so eventually at some point you will end up um, you will end up having to pay for that. Um, but in there, in the very free part, um, then it's, it's a, a really, really good, um, CRM system. Um, uh, there, there's one other, I can't remember the words. Um, the, uh, there is one that's got specific integration with, um, with Shopify, but, um, uh, I'm just going to quick Google now to see if I can do it. Um, I pop, I popped your website up as well. What's, um, Amazing. say it again. Uh, no, I can't. I, sorry, sorry, I, I I can't find it now. But okay, uh, okay. Uh, HubSpot yeah. is the one that we use, uh, and that integrates with a number of our different uh, e-commerce providers. Okay, um, easiest way people can get hold of you because I'm going to have to wrap things up. I'm afraid, but we've got lots of nice no, comments. Jacob's yeah, um, 
Thanks, my name is says thanks, Ryan. Jess says thanks for your time. Pete says great tips. Thanks, Stacey says thanks for your time. Abigail says thank you. Sally says thank you very much. Loads of love out there, mate. So yeah, easiest way people can get hold of you. Uh, Ryan at many.co.uk. Um, email me anything. My advice is free. My time is free. Um, uh, I'm sitting here with my cat at the moment, so I can answer any questions you've got. Um, <laughs> and I would, uh, I would love to um, to help some businesses out. It's quite fun at the moment because everyone's got, there's this kind of really positive sentiment of everyone getting together, and it's yeah. nice to be able to support businesses um, and, and and play the long game. You know, we know that that, that we'll get there. And we know that customers will come back, and we know that business will get back to some sort of normality. So it's yeah. really nice to be able to sort of jump in and support everyone, really. I agree with you. Yeah, it's all about playing the long game. And um, for me, my biggest takeaway, yeah, over-communicate everywhere. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, <laughs> that's a really sound advice in there. So thank you, Ryan. Um, sorry we've run out of time, um, but you've got to pack in a load of really um, helpful <laughs> stuff that people can actually implement tomorrow, you know, rather than any fluff or anything mm. like that. Mm. So um, I've got to jump on another webinar, but I've put your details there. So people watching on the replay as well, because we're getting a lot of people go back uh, and watch the replays um, when they're not working. And I know kids went back today to yeah. homeschooling, not real school. So <laughs> people will be working again who took Easter off as a holiday anyway. So we will get a lot of replays. So our yeah. last details on there are your contact details. So um, yeah, give Ryan a shout, give myself a shout, Alex Chisnell on LinkedIn. Happy to connect with anybody as well. Um, this was Ryan England from many. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, guys.